Hello and welcome to Pigeon Deva News. My name is Tatos Hone and today we are in Pretoria at the lofts of a partnership between uh, Mr. Dupree and Diet Lifts. Uh, in a short moment we'll get an interview with them. They'll tell us more about their racing career, how they managed to have the best birds in this in this era. All right, gentlemen, uh, welcome to Pigeon Deva News. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna start uh, from from the beginning. You know how how it all started I mean, with your partnership. How did you um, guys get together and have that inspiration to to do uh, pigeon racing? We we raced in uh, different clubs when I started racing in Pretoria, and uh, then we through my father we and John get acquainted. And he was racing at that stage in uh, Senegal here in Pretoria, and we, I was racing in the in the federation. And uh, later on, after John's uh, uh, when he had the accident, he was uh, racing at, the, at that stage. He was racing in Pretoria North, and I was racing in another club. And at one stage. Uh, he started dating my sister and eventually they married so he became my brother-in-law and then at one stage I, I uh, sold all my birds I wanted to go to give more uh, attention to my work and uh, John said no I must come to race with him and I said no I can't go racing with you and I could as, as, as well race on my own so John said, no, I can be a sleeping partner, and then we started racing together. And uh, that is about 22 years ago, mm. we started racing together. Now to you, John, since you started racing together, um, how, how was that relationship? Was it, did it be beneficial as opposed if you were racing alone? Yeah, I think uh, when you uh, race alone, there's much more work on yourself. Me and Barton has got a good relationship, and. Uh, the work is now half his, half mine, you know, and uh, if I cannot go toss the pigeons, then uh, he'll go do, do it. So, it's, you, and it's nice to have somebody to talk to when you wait, wait for the pigeons. The sports, I'm not sure how many years you've been into the sport. Um, how, how, who, who taught you? Who taught both of you? To, to My father taught me all of that uh, pigeon racing up to a stage when I started racing on my own. Uh, my father, I rated him as one of the cleverest guys uh, that know about how must a pigeon look like and what, what you must look for in a pigeon and he learned me. He also, he also learned your paper. Your paper was also very, one of the top racers in Pretoria and uh, so he learned me about the sport. And uh, I was I was I started racing on my own in in '79. So what is that? 21 and 22 now. It's about 43 years that I'm in racing on my own. Uh, except for the last 22 years, it's me and John together. Before that, I was raced on my own. And then you, John? Uh, he was an old man, he was staying a block from my father's house and uh, I was still in, just out of school actually and uh, he learned me, his name was Igor Marin, he passed away a few years ago and uh, he, he learned me most of the what I know about pigeons and I still learn every day and uh, he was the guy that helped me from the beginning and put me on the right track to work the right pigeons and everything. Uh, what's your, your, you know, your most greatest achievement that you'd say now this is what I have I've achieved throughout the years? Well, uh, most probably well, I say it, me and Barney was uh, champions for the last 10 years only. We, we've won seven times the points in Pretoria and three times second. And uh, I think that's one of uh, the big uh, things in my life, you know, that the pigeons. And uh, especially now this year with the uh, that uh, 9849 that won all that medals. Tell us more about that, the, the, the pigeon that won, the best pigeon in the country, the, so the, as they say. Uh, can you tell us more about uh, that bird, Bunny? Yeah, the bird is a uh, mealy cock, and it uh, won 
He's won six, he won five races. He should have won six. He doesn't want to go in the one day he came here with the first bird. And that one go in, that one won the race. Then the second bird came and go in, and he, then after that he go in. So he should have won six. And uh, the bird was bred from two pigeons that John uh, bought. He bought all, both pigeons from Owen Bester. The one is the, the father is an inbred Turbo Tom Cock, and that's the main, uh, you can say that the, the basically the, the bloodline of our pigeons, 95% of our pigeons in a racing lot probably have Turbo Tom blood in them. And uh, he, John bought that because he saw it was an inbred Turbo Tom, and that's the pigeon that we raised, so he bought that pigeon on an you know, online sale from our investor. And then afterwards he bought two red mealy cattle hens that also Owen brought the cattle in from overseas and uh, they were young so we couldn't breed them that year so the next year we, we uh, breed uh, one with one of the Turbo Tom cocks and then we, we got that 7, 8, 4, 9 that cock that raised so well his brother also, two of his brothers we only bred three babies out of that pair and they all raised very well Is that your good pair that you have that bred uh, those birds or do you have other uh, uh, good pairs from from your breeding lot? Yes, uh, John, you can you yeah. can be proud. Uh, yeah, we've got quite a few birds uh, that breed uh, a lot of good pigeons. Uh, I think that's the main. If you got the pigeons, pigeon flying is easy then. If you got a good bird, so we've got a few very good stock birds here. So I think, uh, like I said, if you got good pigeons, <laughs> the flying is getting better and better. Then. I just want to mention that we, uh, that Turbo Tom Cock, at one stage when me and John was, uh, when we, John moved to this uh, place here, <coughs> he had to build the house and the loft, so we, we know we're going to sit out one year. So we decided to sell all the best stock birds and race birds at that stage. And so we did some, uh, uh, we checked uh, the results of the, Pigeons and the Turbo Tom <coughs> cock at that stage was the cock that we at that stage we I just, I, I'm still thinking it is still today it's a, that cock that bred the most most sample medal winners from any other cock that we know of and they are still winning the the medals today not these children he's too old but he's the, the, the descendants of that cock is still winning the uh, the sample medal winners. Just for instance, this cock now won one eight uh, six gold and one bronze and one silver. And the one side, it's the Turbo Tom line. Uh, last year, Joe Gomez had the best bird. So on the mother side, I think it's on the mother side was also Turbo Tom, uh, the best that was overall and the best short distance bird from uh, Johan and Mark King was also Turbo Tom on the one side. Uh, two, three years before that, Alvin Bester had the best bird, Concorde. That was also Turbo Tom on one side. And we had a silver and a bronze medal winner in the meantime as well. And before that, long distance uh, uh, gold. That was all the descendants from Turbo Tom. So that cock, I, I believe, and I can't say it's for sure, but I think there's not a uh, cock and he's the skin is that break more sample medal winners than that Turbo Tom cock. So now Turbo Tom, the Turbo Tom cock is basically the number but, one cock. Yeah, but I want to say on the same time, I think the turtles, it looks like they're going to do a, they're going to have a great impact in our loft. We only bred from the one in, and we bred three babies, and they raced like champions. So I think the Turbo Toms crossed with the turtles might be. For us, I think it's going to be for the next, as long as we may be <coughs> going to be the mainstay of our, our regions. So that's one of your objectives going forward, yes. to, to go the turbo tom logs and the best kettles. This is the cock turbo kettle that won eight medals this year, the season, past season. It was the best pigeon in the union and it was also the best pigeon in uh, Sampu best pigeon in South Africa, gold medal, he won six gold medals, 
uh, one silver and one bronze and it was also uh, in, the pre in the preliminary uh, results it was the best pigeon in the world in the season past season his father was a Turbo Tom Cock, an inbred Turbo Tom Cock and the mother is a kittel a red mealy hen, that's why this cock is a red mealy cock. We had three children, bred the same, and all three raised very well. He was the best middle distance pigeon in the uh, in the union, and the brother was the second best middle distance pigeon. You can see uh, the wing of the pigeon. It's still now on. Uh, children it's breeding at a moment and this cock raced phenomenally well it's a double combine winner uh, sister was a double combine winner and the other sister was also combine winner and this cock was also the best middle distance uh, not the best the bronze medal winner on the middle distance also it's got also the turbo tom bloodline in it's got a beautiful eye and for a, it won one of the combine, combines it won was a long distance hard race and for a big cock to do that it's an exceptional performance this hen she was a silver medal winner long distance it was a sampu yeah but she won the, in the union in Pretoria in the combine she was the best long distance bird and the second best uh, long distance bird in the combine in Pretoria was the Sampu gold medal winner because Sampu uh, distances uh, it's, it's, there's more races a shorter distance race it counts as, as well but for in the union the, the longest middle distance race in the union also count for Sampu as a long distance race. So she was the best race, uh, long distance bird in uh, Union Pretoria. And the second best bird was the gold medal winner Sampu long distance and she was the second, the silver medal winner long distance. She's also got a Turbo Tom blood in and she was also a double winner. And her mother was one of the best birds that we ever raised. She was as a five-year-old, she was the best pigeon in our club as a five-year-old. This is the brother of those, that cock that won the eight medals. This one was, uh, he, was the sec he was the best middle distance pigeon in the Union in Pretoria and this one was the second best middle distance pigeon. The feathers aren't as good as it must be because it's, they're starting molding, molting now. So this is after a whole year of racing, training and everything. You can see where the new flights is coming out, they look much better than the old ones. But it looks just like its brother. This hen also raced very well this year. She would have been the second best the pigeon in uh, Sampu. She would, would have been a, the silver medal winner in Sampu, but we didn't enter her. We, we thought she used she wouldn't make it and afterwards you saw she would have been the second best bird if we entered her. She's also with the Turbo Tom blood. She got a little bit root with blood in on the uh, mother's side, on the father's side, sorry. And uh, she raced also very well. She's also a winner but she flew very well. She could have been the second best bird if we had entered her. You see there again, you'll see the flight, the wing. It must overlap there. 
that overlap there must be good and uh, the wing does that doesn't back up there mustn't dip there and she's a very balanced pigeon she also raised very well this year is uh, we call it I don't know what the biological name is but we call it uh, we, we know it as hot nuts free it's very good for the pigeons every time this pigeons is open loft you'll see some of them eat, eating this and even if they were closed in the loft for a few days and you open them, a lot of them will sit here and eat it. What I can tell you is that this is very good for the pigeon's respiratory tract and uh, the throat of the pigeon. When the, 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 the respiratory, the, the, the throat of the pigeon is like this and you give them and they eat this, it will get better, so it's definitely good for the respiratory uh, tract of the pigeons. And they like it, they will always, every day when there's some, you'll see some of them eating this. This, uh, this is a salt, they call it a salt bush. Uh, they originate from uh, the Karua area, but you get two salt bushes that we know of in pigeons. The one is, uh, they call it the old man's salt bush that's got uh, bigger, bigger leaves as this one but the pigeons like this small leaf salt bush, they like it more it's got very stiff uh, the, the twigs are very stiff so the pigeons can sit on, on, on top of it can sit here and it can eat the, the leaves also when we're waiting for the, the pigeons from the racing the birds land here wild birds land here and they eat the leaves so there's, there's something in the leaves that they want if we close if you close the loft the pigeons we are, don't give them open loft for say a, a week and we open them they will sit here about 30 40 pigeons will sit here and eat the leaves so they like it very much and uh, this this bush here is about 27 years old now it started with me and later on when I and me and John started flying together, we moved it from one place to the other place and it's now it's about 22 years old. They like it very much. The pigeons, I don't know what they do for the pigeons, but I think they need there's something in the leaves that they need that they that's why they sit here, they eat them. Basically every day you'll see some pigeons eating from this. Your other objectives for, for 2022? In, uh, in your partnership? Yeah, well, I think we will just keep it like it is. Try to win. That's all you can do. Uh, uh, pigeon sport will bring you down to earth very quickly, so we never said we were going to win the points again or something. Uh, we're going to try. And that's all you can do. You see, me and John is very competitive. <coughs> we raise pigeons to win. We don't raise pigeons. We like it very much. I think even if we don't win, we still love the sport. We love racing pigeons. But our main, every year, we race to win. And you do. And we, and we want to win as, as many times as we can. I think we do some uh, research. I don't think there's ever, ever in the history of in Pretoria racing that the guy had won the, the combine points a lot of times. Now we're not a combine anymore, but this uh, last two years was only the union, but we won the points. Uh, seven times in the last ten years and two times, uh, three times second. And uh, my main object, object, I can s is to go on winning. So what do you do? What do you? What is it that you do on your daily and preparations to ensure that you you are at the top at all times? Well, we we toss the birds over about every day, except from Fridays we don't toss them, and uh, and Sundays we don't toss them. Uh, so five times out of the seven days they get uh, a toss, between 60 and 100 kilometers uh, where they get a toss and, uh, at, and in the afternoons we train the pigeons around the loft also. So uh, I think it's just the type of bird we've got, uh, the turbo toms and the cutters, we, we work the pigeons very hard. Uh, we, we train them in the afternoons, they go in the mornings on a toss and uh, the weekends they get a 240 kilometer toss. 
So, so the tossing plays a, a, a huge role in, in your life. Yeah. So it's a daily toss except for weekends. Yeah, weekend, uh, Saturday, uh, except for Fridays and Sundays. We don't toss the pigeons. Right. And then the food? I think the uh, main thing for me and John, we, we, we give medicine. You can't raise without medicine, but we try to give the medicine as... Uh, as uh, how can I say? Only we need it. Not, we don't give medicine just to get medicine in the water. We will test the pigeons if they don't fly well and if there is there's something wrong we will give them medicine otherwise not. We try to give them natural products and everything we think they might need to get their system uh, strong and everything so they don't get easily uh, they not uh, they don't get sick easily. And we just we we, we basically uh, focus on getting them they must be fed. They must uh, be good pigeons. Must uh, that's good pigeons or very good pigeons make racing easier. And they must be fit and they must be healthy and the weight must be right and your loft must function right. Um, how, how's your loft structured and then how's it structured for um, the the number of birds in the loft? I think our loft can carry about uh, 240 pigeons, but we only keep. Uh, around 160 uh, in the loft. So there's not overcrowded and uh, the loft is wooden floors. Uh, the sides inside is clad out with wood uh, and, the, uh, and the outside is brickwork. And the wooden floor, is it, is it to keep dry? Is to keep the loft dry? Yeah, it, it, the wooden floor is there. It keeps the heat inside the loft also because if you go in the concrete, it's very cold. and. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's not just better with a wooden floor than a normal floor, cement floor. And as we keep a smaller team, is, is that your strategy? Because I know um, in other lofts, they might have a larger number of birds. Given that the season as they train, you might lose a few birds. And you try to keep as much as you can. But in, in, your, in your way of doing things, is, is keeping a shorter number of birds part of your winning uh, strategy. Well, uh, we believe, me and John believe that uh, we, you can't have too many pigeons. It's not. It's it's, it's a drawback to have too many pigeons. In you can only raise twen twenty at a you know in a race. So the, you must have quality, not quantity. And but you, but you must have enough to can raise them right through and to have uh, good results from race one. If you, in our competition today, if, if you slip two races completely, you, you possibly won't win the points. So you must be very consistent and you must be in the first 20, 25, 30, basically every week if you want to win it. So it, it, you, must, you must have good pigeons, but they mustn't be overcrowded. They, mustn't, they must be uh, relaxed in the loft. They mustn't be uh, tensed up because there are too many pigeons in the lot. And then in terms of the, uh, just they call it the widowed system, do you, do you do that? No. You fly cocks and hens separate uh, the whole season. And uh, that, that's how we do it. Uh, no widow with nothing. We just fly them uh, separate, cocks and hens separate. Right. And um, in terms of now bringing change in the pigeon sport, if you had any you know, um, ability to do so. Well, what change would it bring? What I would, would like to see is my, more younger people into the sport. Uh, I believe this is a dying sport because all the people that fly pigeons these days, I can say 80% of them are over 50 and older. So there's not a lot of young people in the sport. And uh, I think that must, uh, that's a big change. Uh, if this sport's gonna survive, there must be younger people who start to fly pigeons. And now, do you think we can achieve that, uh, John? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but it's good. Like uh, I think Samuel is doing it. Uh, uh, he's getting the younger people into the sport, and that they have to go to schools. And they did. like when we was young, we played outside, and we had always birds and all that. Stuff. These days, the kids are playing on the computers and cell phones. Uh, so <laughs> there's a big difference, you know, if you outside uh, person or inside that person. 
but I think uh, this is the, the young guys must start to fly pigeons. I think that's going to help. Yeah, I think some people must give more attention to getting the young people uh, interested in the sport. I pro my thinking is they must make a video and they must show those videos in the schools, in school time. Or get all the children in the hall, show them the video of the pigeons. That doesn't necessarily just be... Uh, but I think from some side they must show them a video from pigeons, how it works, how you pair the pigeons, how they grow up, how you train them and see them coming from the races and get it young, young people interested. Just to get them interested, then you must give them a, 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 the next year another video, not the same video, and the next year after that another one. So every year the children must see videos of the pigeons. Because most young people at school, they, they haven't got time to, to, to get into the pigeon sport. And even if they go after, they go study and they get married and they got children, but sometimes he's going to settle and then he's going to think on something some hobby to do and so so if he's got interested as a young one the chances are he might start flying pigeons that's what i think they should do in terms of your biggest lesson now, I mean, throughout your racing career uh, what's your biggest lesson that you've learned i think my biggest les lesson in the pigeon sport was don't overcrowd your loft uh, like bonnie said the biggest problem is overcrowding and if there's a sickness breaking out all the pigeons is getting sick or die or something like that so the more space you got, I think that's the biggest lesson I've learned is you must have enough space for every pigeon. Don't overcrowd your lots. And yours, uh, Bunny? I can't really think what is what I'd say is the best, the biggest lesson I learned. I learned, uh, I think, that uh, you must try and learn if you, if you want to raise pigeons and you want to raise them well, you must try and learn how must, a, well, how must a perfect racing pigeon look, what qualities must that pigeon have, how must the wing look, how must the body be, what must everything be, and then you must try always to pair your pigeons to get, to make them better. And, uh, and you must know how that looks. If you if you don't know how a good pigeon are looking, and you're flying pigeons, you're not gonna be able to know where to pair that cock to that end. So you're gonna put the cock and end together, and if they score, it's fine. And you're not gonna know why are they, the pigeon scoring or not. So that's that's why I said if if it was easy, you just bought the best pigeons and you will win everything, then the, the, the guys that haven't got the money would stand no chance against the guys that got a lot of money. But uh, I think it's not working like that. You know, you got guys that got all the money that buying the best pigeons and they're not always winning. And then you get a guy that haven't got money even to buy their uh, very uh, expensive pigeons, but they still win because they know how a good pigeon must look like and they, they're breeding in that direction. So you must, I think, my lesson would be for a guy is you must go see all the winners, see all the winners as far as you can see and look and look and see what you see and, and you must find out why is that pigeon better than the other pigeons and so on so that you can try and breed quality pigeons. Yeah. The other thing also what I want to say quickly is uh, you must be a sportman also. Uh, if, you co if you can't win this week, go, the guy that won't go shake his hand. Uh, that's what uh, pigeon racing is all about. If that guy won't go shake his hand, next time you win, then you want him to shake your hand. So you must be a, a good sportman also because if you lose and you, you, you can't take that, then you don't belong in the sport. Yeah, that's what John says correct. If you can't if you can't lose, then you doesn't, mustn't race pigeons because you're going to lose more than you're going to win. Yeah. So you must be able to can lose and still shake the other guy's hand. And don't ask him what he put in the water. Ask him what, what pigeon is that, how is it bred? Because a lot of guys think you must just put the 
something in the water and then you can win. What's the ultimate tip? Tip. Tip for the people out there or, or advice? I, I think that will be my ultimate tip. Try and, try and find out how much the, uh, a good pigeon look like and what qualities must it have. And uh, my tip, I would say a simplicity tip would be you must get your pigeons in the best possible, the feathers in the best possible possible condition in the off season and you must give your pigeons in the best health without excess of medicines and everything and get good pigeons and treat them as good as you can get them in the best condition you can and then if you got good pigeons and you do everything as far as you can right then I think you will start start winning can you tell us more about Dino King uh, what, oh. what's coming, what people should expect for for the new season? Well, the new season, this year we started, the new king started, the, uh, we had our 11th season last last season. This year it will be our 12th season. So we started at uh, Loft and uh, we slowly started building it up, getting the prize money more and uh, get it. We, we try to get uh, the, to train the pigeons to, uh, you know, to, to race, not to just come back to the loft. They must race like you no know, normal racing. And uh, I think we've succeeded uh, a lot in that. Our pigeons, they, uh, when they come uh, from the races, they, they're racing. They come, you know, our returns is very well and uh, we don't lose a lot of pigeons during the season. And uh, so we want to give every every pigeon in the loft must be in the best physical condition that we can get it in for the finals. And then we to give every guy a chance with his pigeons. And uh, we had, uh, firstly, we had only a final race. Then afterwards, we started with the the Bucky race, the Barcelona race. We're racing the pigeons. Our final race is every year is over 600 kilos. Our Bucky Barcelona race was 780 kilos. And uh, we last year we in, in, uh, bring, brought in the big money race for the guys that want to fly for more money. So what's What's uh, different from our big money race to other lofts is that you race your pigeons and after the final race you can enter your pigeons for the big money race so you can't lose your money, your pigeon, if you pay your pigeon and it's get lost before in a two weeks between the final and the big money race we will we, we give the money back or you can put another pigeon in that place so if you pay for a pigeon it's going to the big money race and uh, so you don't enter pigeons and maybe they lost all before you come to the race. So you, but you put in your big money and your pigeon will be in the race. And uh, I think it will, the, it will grow the bucky race also every year got more pigeons. So I think the same will happen with our big money race. Yeah. We just try to make it interesting always, make little changes, get it better that we want to try. And that's good. And, and John, do you have uh, any uh, closing remarks? Okay, I think uh, if on my tip for the pigeon uh, people is you must be very, very observant uh, by your loves. If a pigeon is coming in form, you will see it. If you, if you see the pigeon is not uh, feeling well, you will see it. And pigeon racing is 365 days a year. Uh, that's pigeon racing. You cannot uh, wait until you want to race and then you want to look after the birds. Uh, that's not going to work. And thanks, John. And uh, Bunny, any closing remarks? I just want to say at this stage that me and my brother-in-law, we've now won the points, like I said, seven of the last ten races, the seasons, last two seasons, uh, we've won that. And uh, this, this, this season, past season and the season before that, we came, both of them, we came second in the Gauteng combine with the Albert points. And that is racing against uh, Johannesburg, Joburg, Vereniging, all those guys there.
and I think it's a it's a very good uh, outcome for us. Mr. Dupree and and and, and uh, Bunny, uh, thanks thanks for joining us on today's show, and thanks for making time to to be with us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And there you have it from Bunny and John. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our TV channel. My name is Tato Schoen and this is Pigeon Deva News.